let's uh, talk about some of the other companies in focus. We have with us Dinesh Agarwal, founder and CEO, CEO at India Mart, joining in on the show right now. Dinesh, hi morning. Great to have you on ET Now. Let's first talk about the numbers. And if I'm looking at the margins for the last four quarters, the margins have been below your 30% mark. The street was expecting margins to almost touch 35%. Uh, could you share with us the growth levers, if at all you also sense this improvement uh, to 35%? I had already clarified this in the beginning of the year, last year itself, that now we are in a growth phase after uh, two years of lull at, uh, due to COVID. We had not invested in manpower and uh, salaries also got re-rated uh, heavily. And that is why the margins has come down from uh, upwards of 40% to uh, uh, 25, 27, 28%. And uh, this was uh, to be continued for this entire financial year. And that is where we are. Uh, once this uh, entire uh, backfill of the investment and backfill of the people is done, then I think uh, margins can start to improve further from here on. So for the next uh, foreseeable one or two quarter, I think we will remain uh, around that 28, 20, 30 percent, and then uh, we can start to improve uh, year on year, uh, 2 2 percent, and uh, reach 33, 34 percent uh, soon. Looking at increasing your investments, is there a specific thought which is backing uh, this thesis? Yes, because uh, there was a backfill of the people which was needed, anything, and uh, we did not hire so many people during the COVID times. Uh, because there were so many uncertainties. And now uh, that whole backfill exercise is more or less getting complete. And from here on, uh, the uh, cost structure will increase as per revenue streaks, uh, as per revenue increase. And since uh, revenue has been increasing uh, upwards of 25%, I think uh, uh, the margin will slowly and slowly start to inch up. The to the subscriber or I would say customer base, there are a lot of change, dynamic changes which have happened because of COVID to SME and MSME sector. Uh, now that China has uh, closed down, a lot of changes are happening again. So in terms of the total uh, base of your total customer, because last three, four years have been extraordinary, interesting, challenging and volatile times, is there a profile change? Is there a mixed change? So uh, what has happened is if you look at 1.25 crore uh, SMEs which are registered on GST, we take uh, only GST registered businesses as our paying subscribers and 99% of them are uh, GST registered. So there uh, at the bottom of the pyramid, there is a lot of churn happening. While uh, the established SMEs have started to realize the benefit of internet and realize the importance of internet. So uh, they are becoming more stickier while uh, the, at the bottom of the pyramid, 50% SMEs are still uh, trying to find their new business model because their business models got disrupted during the COVID and many of them have uh, uh, changed their business model. So I think this particular trend will continue for uh, some time. Uh, as the economy stabilizes, I think the bottom of the pyramid has also understood very clearly the importance of internet and adoption of internet and usage of internet. So I think uh, things will become very, very good probably after this uh, FY24. Okay. Um, given that you're so optimistic, then walk us through your outlook then on your paying subscriber additions. That has grown uh, up about 6.6 thousand uh, uh, on a sequential basis. Um, that has been a little bit lower uh, due to the fewer working days in Q3. So are you confident now of an uptick here in your subscriber edition? Will there be a bounce back? Yeah, if you see, uh, tradi traditionally, we, our subscriber growth has been in the range of 15 odd percent. Uh, even before COVID. Now, uh, for the last one year or so, our subscriber growth has been uh, around 25%. Uh, and we will probably continue to add about 8,000 plus customers every quarter for the next foreseeable two, three quarters. So uh, this subscriber growth will bring in revenue in times to come. Nearing the completion of the catch-up on employee hiring that had not been done during COVID, do you think that the integration can be completed by Q4? Because that had been a bit of a stumbling block for uh, the company. And what could be the incremental top line uh, that we can expect? So, uh, as you can see, 
on quarter on quarter our collections from customers has been increasing at around 25-28%. So is the deferred revenue, uh, which has in this last quarter has increased at 29%. Revenue from operation because it also includes a busy integration. Otherwise, on the like-to-like -like basis, that is also in the similar range. Uh, given that uh, by the end of quarter four or by the end of quarter one next year, our all employee related catch up should be over. And then uh, uh, this growth uh, margin will uh, probably settle down at 25-30% as well as the cost margin will start to increase as I said earlier. This is the stock price of India Mart and that's India Mart for you 47.64. Let's look at the two year chart of India Mart and you know at the peak of when everything was going through a complete re-rating in the entire tech stroke the platform space. India Mart, because it is an FN also, the stock, uh, the chart will just come up on your screen. There you go. It was that, uh, you know, we're looking at about one year chart. More than that, if you think about it, it has, uh, it was at 5200 plus. You raised uh, money at a good price when you raised money by the public market by the QIP route. How much of that cash has been utilized? How much of the cash has been utilized as you expand your business? So we raised about uh, 1,070 crores and uh, we have invested about 665 crores into accounting businesses across. 500 crores have gone into busy and uh, the other part has gone into vyapar and life keeping. So, uh, effectively, 66% of that uh, money has been deployed into the accounting segment, which we are uh, completely bullish upon over the next <clears throat> many years. Uh, the rest of the amount has gone into uh, smaller investments, minority investments, uh, which are available on our website. UIP money has been used. I mean, there is no, no cash left from that. More or less, I think uh, I, I won't be able to give you an exact figure, but I think 90% of that money has been deployed. Whom would you say is your uh, biggest competitor? I mean, are you getting any kind of a, uh, any kind of a competitive uh, or competition from what Amazon is trying to do or the way uh, Flipkart is not trying to migrate? So these are, these are continuous uh, things, you know, they have certain advantages of, uh, you know, being able to deliver consumer goods, uh, uh, smaller value items. While uh, at India Mart, we have, you know, 100,000 odd categories and those categories are highly uh, commercial in nature and highly industrial in nature. A lot of uh, uh, customizations happen. Uh, these are truckload of items. Uh, these are uh, heavy duty uh, <coughs> items. So I think, uh, where uh, we are a very at a very sweet spot between Google and uh, Amazon, while we maintain an advertising business uh, similar to Google, and we maintain our catalog which is similar to Amazon. Uh, so I guess uh, there is a need for this kind of a platform, which is neither served by both the uh, advertising and uh, e-commerce giants. All right. Thank you for walking us through your outlook on collection efficiency, what your view is uh, in terms of your margins, as well as how you see your overall business and investments shaping up. That's the view coming in on India Mart. Well, let's